Shamaya Show with your host, Shamaya on the Beat, aka SOTB. Here, we talk to entrepreneurs, music artists, and public figures to help you develop a mindset for success. And now, your host, SOTB. Hey, this is Keep Grinding Podcast. This is the show Mindset for Success. We are here once again with an awesome awesome show lining for y'all today maybe we're talking to a music artist matt weston he's from Pittsburgh. maybe we're going to be talking about all his music and i just want to welcome you to the show right now how you doing matt i'm doing pretty good man a little tired had a long day working but i'm glad to be on the phone with you here and uh thanks for having me again it's been a while since we've talked yes sir man the first time we talked it was about last year and he was on my other podcast show i am refocus podcast with refocus magazine and this time keep grinding and before we get to the deep details man tell the audience a little bit backdrop story of you and how you got into music Sure. Yeah. Well, I've always been involved in music one way or another since I was a little kid. Um, but I've only really been professionally pursuing it for a couple of years. Um, I was an engineer for about six years and then, um, I wasn't too happy. I was living in a cubicle all day and, uh, it just wasn't, wasn't for me. When I left my engineering career, um, I decided I was going to pursue another passion of my heart, uh, and just try to be happy, you know, because engineering wasn't cutting it for me. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I was devastated, you know, just in a dark place. And uh, music um, really just uh, became uh, the biggest part of my healing process from losing my father. So music was a huge part of just uh, me rebuilding myself, and it's just like a part of my DNA now. It's really been a blessing to me, and I think it's been a blessing to others as well. And I just can't believe how how it's um, been going so well from day one, really. Um, I feel like I'm finally doing what I'm supposed to do. And it's unfortunate, you know, if my father hadn't passed away, we wouldn't be talking right now. But um, I guess, you know, life works that way sometimes. It's a little bittersweet, but I'm, uh, I know he's proud. And uh, I'm really glad that I could be talking to you today. And with the music that you've been able to do, uh, you have... You know, Farm Town, that's, you know, your your second single. Uh, also received international airplay. Uh, you've been doing a lot of things since the last time we met, man. You, October 2018 issue of Billboard magazine as emerging artist. So as an emerging artist, to have that kind of recognition from Billboard, you know, a lot, a lot of music artists out there and they didn't even get opportunities to have those types of recognition. How has that been for you to see your hard work pay off? Mm -hmm. It's just, um, it's really giving me the confidence that I am finally doing what I'm supposed to do. And it's, uh, it's a great honor. And it's really humbling to be honest, um, because I'm relatively new to, uh, you know, a professional music career and just to see it really take off is, um, is, you know, just a testament to what my father told me to keep pursuing music. I feel like he knew, you know, um, and it's, it's really humbling and an incredible honor. And it's just really the momentum just keeps building. It seems, um, with, you know, with the, the awards I've been nominated for and with the feedback I've gotten from fans and with uh, the reviews of my songs and just everything, uh, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be more proud. And I actually just released a new song. Uh, a couple days ago, so and I plan on doing that every every few months this year, just to uh, continue building that momentum and see where it takes me. And speaking of just releasing new songs, what's your favorite part being inside the music industry? Is it when you're performing in front of your fans, your listeners, or is it when you're in the studio under construction mode, or is it all of them together? I think each part has its own charm and its own, uh, you know, uh, thing that makes it special in the studio. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. It can be very rewarding. It can be frustrating, but it's a journey. And, uh, you know, when you get the final product, um, it's like having a baby almost, you know, it's, it's your baby. So there's a lot of satisfaction that comes from that, but performing for, for fans is instant gratification. 
it's um, and just to see them react in real time and to perform and pour your heart out to them in person um, is one of the greatest feelings in the world. So I think um, if I had to pick and choose, that's probably um, live performance in front of fans is probably the best part. Um, but there's something special about being in that studio, and that's where the magic really you know, starts. That's where uh, the you know the creative side of your brain really gets uh, uh, you know gets its whatever you want to say it gets its fix. You know? mm-hmm. That's uh, when you're in the, when you're in the workshop. You know? And with what your dad told you to keep pretty much going making music and, and just continuing that journey. You ever felt times when you're in the studio or you're on the road doing the shows that he's just kind of right there watching? I feel like he's with me every day, all the time. Um, I mean, I'm a part of him and he's a part of me. And uh, I know I wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't for him. And uh, honestly, it, it keeps me motivated because I don't want to let him down. Uh, this is this is what I'm doing, and this is what I I plan to do for the rest of my life, you know, God willing. So um, he's with me every step of the way, and uh, you know, I I talk to him, and you know, just I, I don't know. I, it's hard to describe the relationship with your father once he's gone. You know, I haven't really talked to him for three years. He's been gone, but I still feel like he's he's right here with me. Um, and I know, you know, he was a man of faith. So um, I know that uh, that he's proud of me, and I know where he is. So, yeah, my dad, I think he's throwing down some extra blessings for me, to be honest with you. <laughs> and definitely people can check out the website, mattweston.com. When you, when you see everything come full circle, I mean, you, you love a, a promising career number one Mm -hmm. and it wasn't just any kind of career we all know engineers you know that's that can be a good paycheck (laughs) Mm -hmm. when when it comes to taking that step of faith out of the comfort zone and going all the way was some of the learning curves you had to go through being an entrepreneur because like I always say on the show is one thing to like the idea to be your own boss, but it's a, it's a whole different thing to actually be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it presents a whole different set of challenges and, and problems. Um, but it's been such a growing experience that uh, I really feel like I'm becoming who I was meant to be. And I've really matured a lot in, in, in a lot of different ways through this uh, this journey. It really has been a journey um, of healing and of uh, personal. Um, I've learned a lot about myself through the process. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was a risk to walk away from engineering, that's for sure. But I figured, you know, I have one life and I'm not going to waste it in a cubicle if I don't feel like that's where I'm supposed to be. And and here we are now. So I think I made the right decision. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> you definitely made the right decision because when when the people on this show, this new show I have, keep grinding, that the whole message is what is the blueprint and what is the secret ingredient? And honestly, mm-hmm. the only common thread that is in every single person's story, including yours, is that you made a choice. At the end of the day, that, that's what it is. You made a decision that I'm going to go for it and I'm not looking back. Mm-hmm. What do you say to yeah. people out there, music artists, who want to have that opportunity like you have right now? to push themselves into a promising music career like what what words was would you give to people out there to continue their grind and maintain their focus mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple things um number one you have to believe in yourself and be true to yourself because that's where the magic happens um if you're going to be a copycat of someone else you'll never make it you know that the magic comes from being true to yourself. You're created that way for a reason. So don't waste it. Number two, you got to take a risk. You got to take risks. 
<laughs> it's it's scary, but you know uh, that's where the reward comes from. If you don't take a risk and you play it safe, you'll never make it anywhere. You'll be stuck where you're at. And number three, surround yourself with a lot of good people that you can trust, people that believe in you, and people that push you to be better. And with those three ingredients, uh, I think, and with some hard work, uh, that's a recipe for success in any endeavor, whether it's a business or music or, or whatever you're, you're pursuing. And you don't just do music. You also are an emerging uh, actor as well. Tell the audience about this whole Johnny Cash idea and how did that present itself? Well, um, I was really lucky that um, a friend of mine is working on a film that's being um, produced here in, in Pittsburgh, where I'm from. And it's uh, it's about this place called the Gaslight Cafe in Greenwich Village in the late 50s, early 60s. And it's called 116 McDougal. That's the address. And it was uh, the beginning of the counterculture movement in America. Uh, folk musicians and beat writers were getting their start there. Like Bob Dylan got his start there. He was just a teenager. Um, Peter from Peter, Paul, and Mary. A um, bunch of tons of people came through there and the owner of the place protected the artists from the mafia and from the local police and, and from government and the FBI because they were considered a threat you know with their counterculture um, message and their music and their writing and um, well Johnny Cash used to pop in from time to time when he was in town and he would play a set just randomly and uh, he became good friends with a lot of the artists there including Bob Dylan and when they found out that Johnny Cash performed at this place. The producers of the film said, we have to cast someone for Johnny Cash. That is just too iconic of a role to not include. And luckily, my friend works um, in the film uh, with hair and makeup, and she suggested me. So I turned in an audition tape, and they loved me. I was the only one they auditioned, and I got the role as uh, young Johnny Cash. And uh, the rest is history. Basically, we, uh, we just did a stage performance uh, to help promote the film. And um, we're going to be filming, I think, this summer. And it's also being adapted for Broadway. So this is really starting to get a lot of attention. And I have the honor of portraying one of my absolute icons, uh, idols, uh, Johnny Cash. So, um, you know, I, I'd pursued acting in the past after, after I was an engineer and now I'm focusing on music and I knew somehow that they would fit together somehow. And here they are. And I, I really feel like I'm on the right path, brother. You know, uh, the acting and the, and the music are just starting to, to come together into one thing. And, uh, I couldn't be more excited or more honored so um you know my creative side was right i got out of that cubicle and now i finally feel like i'm living so to anybody out there if you have an inkling that you know there's something that you're supposed to do with this life give it a shot and take that risk and go for it no that's really good because a lot of people are looking for answers you know a lot of mm -hmm. people are asking that question what is it you know there has to be more to this life like what what am i here for like what's going on i mean there's times where we have to kind of reflect and like you're saying make that ultimate choice of am i going to settle or am i going to actually be hungry and go for that one thing that just it yeah. ignites the flame you know like it's it, scary it's yeah. definitely scary but it's also scary to miss out on what your life should be or could be you know that's also scary and it's actually scarier to me than taking a shot so. And you mentioned uh, faith earlier uh, in the episode, uh, this episode. How has faith really played a role in your life growing up and to this point? Well, um, faith has really just made me into the, the man that I am. Um, I was blessed, you know, to have a, a family that uh, encouraged encouraged our faith. I, I'm a Christian. Um, and uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid to tell that to anybody. Um, uh, it, it's an honor to be a Christian, and uh, it's really just shaped 
my life in, in almost every aspect. And it gave me the courage and the bravery to step out and take this risk because I felt like God was leading me in that direction and that um, I didn't want to waste my purpose. I felt like that was a slap in the face to God. Who am I to tell him what I'm supposed to do? You know, So I took the risk. I stepped out in faith. And uh, I think he honors that when, you know, um, I actually was funny. I was just watching something about miracles and um, faith is one thing, but there's an action usually uh, that he asks you to do, you know, to allow that miracle to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when you step out in faith, taking that step is when the miracle happens. If you just believe it's going to happen, you know, it might. But if, if you take that step in faith, that's where, where it all happens. And so I did that. And um, I just I really feel like there's some good things coming this year and into the future. So, yeah, faith is uh, I wouldn't be alive, honestly, without faith. I, I don't know if I would have survived losing my father, to be honest with you. Um, but it's gotten me through everything in my life. And uh, I'm, I'm just happy to say yeah, that uh, you know, God is faithful. God is good. Well, that definitely makes everything crystal clear with you are saying just now because like I said a lot of people always ask what you know what is it about this life what am I supposed to do that's the million dollar question I mean a lot of people won't play the lottery ticket because they're like man there has to be something outside of this job <laughs> but for you it sounds like you definitely won the lottery ticket with the music in the now acting that you're a part of, when you, when's all said and done? What's the message you want to leave behind to your listeners and now soon to be viewers when they see you acting? Um, I would just say don't don't waste your life and um, figure out figure out who you are, you know, um, who you're meant to be, because everyone's here for a purpose everyone and uh, i think this is part of my purpose i know that you know as life goes on things will change um but uh, don't wait don't wait because time flies I-, I wasted 10 years of my life doing engineering and it's uh because it was something i was supposed to do you know um and when i finally started doing what i felt like i was supposed to do that's when everything started to change so don't waste your life and uh, just be you, be you. Man, that's 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 good because uh, what you just said about things began to change once you mm-hmm. started doing what you were meant to do. That's mm-hmm. just it. That's exactly what it is. Uh, it seems to go a lot smoother when you don't force yourself. It's like yeah. being yeah. your own yeah. fingerprint. Yeah, it's, it's being yeah. your own fingerprint. You know- and it's all you. And you know what's great, too? It helps to inspire other people who watch you. So you're making a difference not only in your life, but in others as well. And that is a great feeling. And that's that's what the show is all about. Keep grinding. Because every day is up to you. I say this. I'm going to say it for later because I always have the last little statement at the end of the show. But I say that a little bit later. But that's what the show is really all about. It's all about getting people in that mindset because mindset for success that's what we're trying to get people into we're not giving them answers to million dollar schemes we're giving them a choice to start living your best life now don't try to force yourself to worry about money and all that because that will come once you start living your passion Mm-hmm. Money is nothing but a tool that you get to use. It ain't everything. Because if it's everything, then anybody can do it. But not anybody can be an entrepreneur. Not anybody can do that. Why? Because you have to make a choice that you want to. And once you made that choice, then you join the club that anybody can do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but you can't join that club until you make that choice. That's what I'm getting at. Because for you... You you made a series of choices. You chose mm-hmm. to leave one path for your calling. 
And once you answer that call, you had another series of calls that feel test people, whether they really are serious about going forward for you, pushing yourself to do what you're doing. What has been that main ingredient that has kept you in that zone, whether it's a good day or a bad day? Um, the, the main thing is still the first thing that motivated me to pursue music was my father and, and losing him. Um, that, uh, that keeps me motivated because I, I want, you know, I want to make him proud and, uh, I've started on this path and I don't want to go on another path. I feel like I'm on the right path. So, um, just, uh, it, it really is just my close connection with my father. That's keeping me motivated it, because, you know, I'm doing this for a purpose. I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm not doing it for the money or for the fame or for, for whatever, I'm doing it because it's it's from my heart, and that you know that will always be with me, and I think that will always keep driving me forward. And that is the difference. What Dave was saying, the difference maker. That's it right there, man. You said it already mm -hmm. early in the show. Time flies by when you're having fun. So. <laughs> As I always say on the show, about to land a plane so everybody get to where they are going to after they finish this podcast, listen to the show. Before I say my last statement for the show, how can people stay connected with you on social media? Mm -hmm. um, I'm at mattweston.com, and uh, um, there's links on there for my um uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I believe I'm at Matt underscore Weston on Instagram and uh, Matt Weston music on Facebook. Um, and I'm on YouTube as well. So basically just Google me and you'll find all kinds of stuff about me. Pretty easy to find. Well, there you go, man. Once again, that is Matt Weston. Appreciate you being on the, on the show. Keep grinding. May you represent the whole meaning of the show very well, because that's what it's about. People, like you who know what they want to do in life and they don't apologize for it. They go straight forward and they don't look back. That's what it's about. Thanks for having me, brother. It's been a pleasure. Well, to the audience, you already know what time it is. This is how I end the show with this message. Just last, just reminder, because repetition is how you create habit. Well, this is the message like on every episode keep grinding because every day is a choice no one's going to call or text you and see if you're doing it because they're busy living their own life so get off the couch if you listen to this show you know stop making excuses go get that guitar or go get that microphone start making that choice man because it's a series of choices every day is up to you and with that said even if you hit rock bottom the best next thing you can do is look up and on that note we're out <laughs>